So he's got some more money and he's ready to play. Let's see what happens. Well, he borrowed from Tom Dwan, and Dwan now raises the three thousand dollars with his seven six of spades. And here comes Sahamius. He's gonna call with ten eight off suit. It is dead. This is it. I missed it. I didn't drink it from last year, so Four six three on a flop. I mean, she was supposed to be bringing them. Tom Dwan's got top pair and an inside straight draw. And he bets eight thousand dollars. Continuation bet. But he actually has a hand. Uh, Sahami has raises the twenty nine thousand. He does not believe. What does he see here? Well, he thinks maybe Juan has missed, and he can take the pot right here. He has nothing. He has no draw. And Juan calls. Juan's not going to raise because Sahami is could have slow played an over pair. Uh -huh. Juan's going to be a little cautious. Nine of clubs on the turn. That actually gives the Hamius a uh, inside straight draw. <laughs> he would actually win the pot with an A, seven, eight, or a ten. <laughs> It'd be hard. But as he's done before on our show, Zahamius aborts his mission. Right against an eight. Well, eight gives him the best hand. Juan checks. Now, Zahamius should realize if Juan had an over pair, he probably would have played this hand differently. If he has a pair and a straight draw like he has, then the eight's the best hand. But these players afraid of value betting into Juan because Juan could easily come over the top with nothing. So he checked. Yeah. And he's going to win. first season, it was very bad for you. Advanced poker. Now they start playing. What was up there? If, if he wouldn't make it in the river, he would probably bet, but he made his fair, so. Clock was 6 4 right? Yeah. He's trying to think about his imagination. Six four three. Can he make a straight? No. Can he make a flush? Yes. I, from what I hear, people tell me it's usually high on their list. Yeah. No bows. No bows. Thirty-five. And Juan gets some cards again. He's going to raise the thirty-five hundred with his queen jack off suit. That's not exactly some cards. He feels like playing. AJ, when someone loses the hand before, especially when they get drawn out on the river and someone calls on the flop when they shouldn't have called, you feel like playing. So that's what I meant to say. Yeah. Jack Queen offsuit becomes a playable hand. Meanwhile, there's a club festival going on here. A lot of people feel like playing right now. 
I don't mean that kind of club feather. I mean, there's a lot of clubs. The suit clubs. Everybody's got clubs. Hey. Club. Another club. I think there's nine clubs out so far. Wow. A lot of people in the town. Well, there's four clubs left. Let's see if we get any on the flop. Oh, that'd be fun. Like three times a week. Ace, four, seven, no clubs. Daniel's got the best hand with a pair of sevens. Ellie's got an inside straight draw. Zygmunt, I showed some speed in the last hand I won. Maybe I'll bet this hand too. 15,000. 15,000. I think that's going to get it. I haven't heard him say a word all day. Too good. He's right. He played that hand well. Juwan is right. Oh, cool, cool, cool. And Zygmunt takes down two in a row. Yep, Zygmunt is looking good. Two hands, two pots, about 50000 in profit. That's high stakes poker. Welcome back to the Golden Nugget Casino. We're playing high stakes poker. Well, Ilari Zygmunt Sahamiez is off to a hot start in this episode. Not only that, but he's removed his hood. He looks a lot less like Yul Brenner. Maybe we're going to start seeing the aggressive guy everybody on the internet is scared of. You think he's going to continue with this aggression? Well, Zygmunt showed speed in the hands we saw tonight, but that aggression was somewhat limited. We haven't seen him throw in a major bluff, so the jury is really still out. Who would you say is the most impressive so far in this season of High Stakes Poker? You. You are the most impressive. Your poker knowledge that you're exhibiting here is massive. Okay, who is the second most impressive? Definitely Tom Juwan. He has played nearly perfect poker, and that's about the best you can expect from anybody. How do you think your buddy Doyle is doing with some of these young guns? Well, most players will tell you that they see things clear when they're not in the hands. Big Papa hasn't gotten anything right observing hands he's not in. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. You know, a scooter can reach speeds up to 30 miles an hour. Let's get back to the action. Oh, I'm just kidding. You wouldn't run me over, would you? Bears of fishes. We don't show enough fishes on this show. It's a poisonous fish. Is that a poisonous well, fish? I think it's a lionfish. I think it is. It's poisonous. I'm not going to make a comment that some <laughs> of the players are... No, I, I know you're going with that. Ace Gate's going to raise to 3300 with his Queen 8 offsuit. And Barry sensing something makes it 12000 And look at this! <laughs> Barry was trying to play with East Gate. He's running to Tom Juan with aces. I'll go get you one. It'll, it'll cost you, but I'll go get you one. Yeah, fine. Tom Juan decides to dive in for a while. <laughs> That's praying. Hey, he's going to raise to 31,300. And East Gate's going to get out of the way. And Barry's going to almost insta-call. I think this is because it's Tom Juan. Jack Nine of Hearts is generally not a hand Barry would put in $20,000 more with. Sure. Before the flop. Barry makes jacks. Well, Barry's flop top pair. Barry's got the button, so Juan's got to go first. Juan bets 46,200. Barry's got a little bit of a dilemma here. Hmm. He does not want to be pushed around by Tom Juan. He knows Tom Juan might have ace king, ace queen. Tom Juan might have a pair of sixes or sevens. Barry's got top pair, but it's going to cost him 46,200 to call. Now, if someone like Doyle raised before the flop and Barry had Jack Nine of Hearts, I don't think Barry would call. We wouldn't see the flop. No more pain. 
Well, that's nice in the middle of the hand. Yeah. Is this my man? <laughs> that's all. <awesome. laughs> Kelly's giving a so rose good. to Sig. Very sweet. Now, if he leaves some candy bars outside his hotel room tonight, <laughs> he's off the show. Raise a hundred. Barry raises a hundred thousand more. Barry's committed himself. And Barry's not acting. He's really nervous. His hands are shaking. Come on. And Tom Juan's got aces. He knows that. Barry's committed, so quickly he goes all in. Oh, oh man. And Barry calls, and so now the pot is almost $550,000. That happened in a hurry. And Doyle, continuing his accuracy of this season, says somebody has to have three jacks. Up and down. Up and down. Nine quid. No, no. Jack oh, I don't say that. Okay. And remember, Barry does not like to run it more than one time. He does it the old way and lets the chips fall where they may. I'll do whatever he wants. Yeah, that's all I got. Just it. And you know this is the second biggest pot without a gimmick on the history of high stakes poker. Straight poker. Yeah, yeah, but Barry gets a nine. Wow. three times. That could be a half a million dollar nine if Barry can avoid a three, ten, or an ace. He does, and now Barry can take the money to the bank. 548700 to Mr. Greenstein. Well, here, you can go. Ace is overrated, though. Juan casually says, nice hand, like any 22-year-old who's just lost $550,000 would say. I get more nasty play Monopoly. Well, look, Barry looks like he's lost. Barry's behaving properly. He's drew out in a big hand. All right. Well, actually, this might be... I don't mean to rub it in, but before I forget... Yeah. You know, like mathematically, it probably wasn't a good thing. I had to say something for all those kids on the internet that math is idiotic. And if you feel like you're going to win, like Daniel said, I just felt like I was going to win this spot. You got to put it in. So that's the catchphrase. Um, math is idiotic. Wow. Great steaks and seafood and an amazing atmosphere versus raw fish with all the cool folk. Take your pick. The Golden Nugget has it all in high stakes poker and boot. Well, Barry Greenstein just took in a big pot by cracking Tom Dwan's aces and gave us a new catchphrase for charity. LOL documents. A lot of these guys who are online and post in the forum said if I say LOL documents, they donate to charity. This one is. Barry just made 10000 And they're hoping to raise 10000 And it ended up $20, $50 a time. They raised 55000 So I said, well, you know, I'm going to high stakes poker again. Maybe we can come up with another catch prize. And some of the people on our forums came up with math is idiotic. And that comes from my son, Joe, who always says he's a field player. He doesn't pay attention to the math. If he feels it's right, he does it. Math is idiotic. It's children-inc.org. It's Children Incorporated. And just send 20 bucks to the Math is Idiotic charity drive. There you go. And we know Math is Idiotic because he had way the best hand. The money. I had, uh, with Children Incorporated, built a gymnasium in South Dude. will protect me. That's why you hit the nine. Right? That is why I hit the nine. There is no chance for this $25,000 <laughs> chip. I would even think of selling the feather so don't even think if tom had this feather he's already one of the luckiest guys in poker if he had, if he had this feather it would be all over and for those of you who believe that math is idiotic and want to play jacks against aces there's a game every other week at my house you are welcome and bring your feathers <laughs> take a couple for that one <laughs> If you give me aces, I'll tip you 300, but don't, don't make me <laughs> if lose. They get, if they lose? Yeah, I mean, I might have tipped some, yeah. but no. 
And Barry now with a King Jack's going to raise to 3,500. And Benjamin's in. And just a two of them, as we say in New York. <laughs> Six, seven, queen on the flop. Seven of spades is a beautiful card. I check it. Barry bets 5,000. Barry's feeling his oats, and it works. The power of the feta. Barry's on a roll. about he's not getting a rose yeah maybe david was mad he didn't get a rose that makes sense to me they can they can let me get sucked out on for six hundred thousand and then not give me any alcohol for it's only five hours that's not okay Seriously. only like five and change close to six and five <laughs> sorry okay close to six and five. we serve booze to 22 year olds who just lose big pots on ice next <laughs> yeah it was close to six and five but ace five king for doyle the race at 3,500. Barry's going to go for the hat trick. Tom Dwan's not going to race with a pair of nines. Ellie's not going to race with ace jack. They're going to let Sahami as in. 80 pre flop. Yeah, 560. Oh, it's 80 pre flop? And Daniel. 31. I think the 9 4 and the 7 4 is going to win this pot. Raise, okay. raise, raise, raise. Raise, 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 raise. Nine, ten, queen, three spades. And Tom Juan has flopped a set of nines. So you made it how much? Doyle was the original raiser. He's got the second nut flush draw. And now Ellie, who's got the nut flush draw and an open end straight. He's going to bet 12,000. And Doyle didn't even have to think much. <laughs> Just lets it go. Come on. Well, there's a lot of people in the pot, but it was a cautious play, but the correct play in this circumstance. Seven on the turn. That does not help Ellie. Ellie's probably putting Juan on a queen, maybe nah, Queen Jack. Ellie bet 37,000. Hoping to make Tom Juan throw away a hand like Queen Jack. Hoping the semi-bluff here will close this hand out right now. Does that mean you have a good hand over there? What is with the roses? I don't even get it. The problem with What's your business? I mean, this is uh, just clapping. I'm just curious. It's a uh, guy thing, Danny. Wait, what <laughs> you got to do? He's saying that when he loses a pot, he just smells the flower and then he feels good. Oh, I get it. Uh, Give me freaking about 12 of those then. <laughs> And Tom John's not throwing away three nines. He's hoping to board pairs in case Ellie flopped a straight or a flush. A six on the river. No help for Ellie. There you go, check. Will he fire that third bullet? What do you think? It's Tom Dwan. It's Tom Dwan. It's Tom Dwan. No. He probably will, ain't he? Sir. Yeah, that's good enough. Probably when I check. I didn't realize when the flop came out, but Doyle had a straight flush draw with the king of spades. Jack of spades was a straight flush, and he did not call 12,000. Turned out he was right, but very cautious play. I was waiting for the river bullet, and then that came, card came out, and I wasn't waiting for the river bullet. Desert playing high stakes poker. There should be soda as well, you know. Or the cranberry with soda. They say we're ordering a signature car cocktail. We know. We know it's served in a highball glass, right? I'm just letting you know. By the way, I have a carnation for you, AJ. Another person, just esteem that I feel for you. I'd like you to have this carnation. Thank you very much. Smell it. I call. Doyle calls with his fours. 
Let's see if it starts some action here. Well, Ellie usually loves to play the straddle. He's going to play with a jack three suited. So Jamez raises up to 12,000. It's a straddle, right? Zygmunt has done this a few times, and it generally hasn't worked out for him this season. And maybe Peter Eastgate knows that because he calls with the four deuce of hearts. And the original straddler is out. Ellie's saying, what's going on, boys? <laughs> So just going to be um, Zygmunt and Peter Eastgate. Six, eight, nine on the flop. Both players miss. So how many has checks? I'm surprised he didn't try a continuation bet here. 25. And Peter Eastgate is going to use his image to his advantage here. Bet and take it down immediately. So Zygmunt continues to make these bets and not follow up. And Peter Eastgate says, I didn't know it was that easy. <laughs> Is this kosher? Are they going to get mad if I leave it on the If you spill it, they probably will. If you had to guess what state Tom Dwan is from, what state would you guess? The North or South Dakota, something like that. Very close. Yeah, where's he from? New Jersey. Get out. What exit? I want to just ensure On the turnpike? Yeah. I don't know what exit. He's from New Jersey. That's all. That's what it says there. Tom Dwan, New Jersey. That's like right on the Delaware border, right there. Really? Maybe on the Delaware border. I'll take me under. So Elliot Lesra raised at 3,500 with his ace four of hearts. Sahami so has jumps in with his 10 nine. Flop comes seven king queen. Both players have missed. That was a little larger though. Elliot bets 10,500. Ellie makes a continuation bet, and Zygmunt makes a continuation call. Three hearts on the turn. That gives Ellie the nut flush draw. Zygmunt, incidentally, would make a straight with a jack. Ellie bet 16-5. Are that still his only rules? Sorry, I don't need it now. I'm sorry. My wing where did the other one go? How are you doing that, Sigmund Zygmunt might believe that Ellie has nothing. And he might choose to raise here. He's definitely not thinking of calling, just drawing for a jack. But he surprised me before, but I doubt very much if he'll just call. If he stays in this spot, he's going to raise. 380? So down 120, I think. Yeah, that would make sense. Plus or minus like that. And he raised the 54,000. Pretty nice size raise. It's going to cost Ellie $37,500 to call. Put it in bad. <laughs> put it in bad. But, you know, <laughs> if he calls... Eagle feather, this dressed eagle feather that the Lakota... He's calling because he thinks Bigman has a big hand and it'll get paid off if he hits his heart on the river. There he goes. Right. And I said, well, actually, would you guys... Ellie's saying hard, hard, hard. I may not have a house. So they said it was okay. I could... Deuce of diamonds on the river. Both players check. Ellie says you win. Yeah, I was going to say... That way the game's been going, that had to happen sooner. He doesn't know he's playing against. That is how he's good. Maybe Zygmunt doesn't realize you're allowed to bet on the river if you don't have a hand. <laughs> We're used to it. You can see Ellie's shock. A $139,000 present, Ellie. The Golden.
Golden Nugget Casino has a game for everybody. Craps, blackjack, roulette, or slots, you'll find your game. And of course, the poker room is always waiting for you. Well, you in the poker room last night, I saw a guy look a lot like you playing an $8 sit-and-go. Nah, it wasn't me. It was not my game. No. Guy had a feather in his hat. My cousin Gino, maybe, not me. Yeah, looked a lot like blood relatives. Juan's raised to 3,500 with Jack. So Anaez is going to join him. Your scores only have to be high. Uh, they have to be five. Five or 15. Eastgate 10. To raise this. Eastgate loves those small hearts. That's my five. Four away to the flop. Queen, seven, deuce, couple of clubs. Everybody's whiffed here. Nobody has a pair. A little unusual. Now, if Zygmunt would bet here and take it down. Bet it, Ziggy. Uh, nope. No. Four diamonds on the turn. Peter Eastgate's got the best hand now with a pair of fours, but Doyle has a flush draw. If Juan Zygmunt bet a small amount, Doyle will probably call. Nobody bets. Flush and Juan's got aces. Doyle checks, thinking that one of these three players must have an ace. And Juan bets 6,000. I know Doyle's going to raise when it comes back to him. I didn't know, however, that <laughs> Zygmunt was going to call with King High. Yeah. He thinks Juan's full of it, and maybe he can make a spectacular call here with King High. But here comes Big Papa. I'm going to raise it. No kidding. $30,000 raise for Big Papa. Juan is saying, could he be making a move? He's got Zygmunt behind him. He doesn't know what Zygmunt's doing. And Zygmunt says, what the hell was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> and Dahl's trying to act like it might have been a bluff. Oh, uh, baby. Should be minus 25, though. You want to the Yeah, that's right. Hit a, a prop. got a stiff jack on, on a cracker. <laughs> Did you translate that for me? He said he hit a prop. He got a stiff jack and he wants a cracker. Oh, all right. Whatever right. you get a stiff jack, you want a cracker. I should try that. I, you're yeah. right. You got bluff there for me. Whether or not you hit the prop. You want that cracker. That's what I've heard. Right. In fact, I'd like to get a cracker right now. Two kings? <laughs> so Tom Dwan is raised to 3,500 with his 10 8 offsuit. And David Benjamin's in with his queen 8. He disappeared for a while. Yeah. He's back. I think he went to that house where the French people were in Apocalypse Now. <laughs> and here's a big papa. He's going to call with Jack Nine of Hearts. Queen, eight, six on the flop, couple hearts. Big flop. Doyle's got a straight and a flush draw, and David Benjamin has flopped top two. How much is that, though? Check, check to David. The two, so two. And Benjamin bets 7,800. Now, this season, Doyle has chosen to play small ball poker. Most of the time, he hasn't raised with big draws like this. Doesn't want to lose too much in one hand if he doesn't hit. And let's see if he continues. 
Yep, he just calls the 7800 and Dwan calls with a pair of eights. Kind of ambitious call from Tom Dwan right here. Nine of spades on the turn. Well, that gives Doyle a pair, a flush draw, and a straight draw. <laughs> What's funny about that? A lot of stuff going on for Doyle. And he makes a big bet, 35000 Forget about small ball poker. Let's gamble, boys. <laughs> 35,000 to see the river. And Juan's going to call with a pair of eights and a double gutter. What's David going to do? Queens and eights. Somebody could have made a straight with that nine. And he just calls. And Dahl makes a flush on the river. He bet 35000 on the turn. Dole might think that somebody in this hand has made a higher flush. If someone bets here, I think Doyle will just call. He's back to small ball poker. You can bet the rose. Juan is saying, should I represent a flush? Maybe these guys don't have a flush. Maybe I can take this pot down with another $100,000 bet. If he does fire, I think Doyle will call him. <laughs> now, David is not concerned oh, I like to see the same thing from David, yeah. with Tom Juan anymore. Tom Juan's admitted he has nothing. Oh, David checks and he's looking right at Doyle. That's the guy he's afraid of. Doyle has a flush. I don't think it would have worked. <laughs> I think I made a good decision. Ah, uh, you good, buddy. Oh, f Oh, man, that's good. Juan was right. It yeah, wouldn't have worked. Big Papa was going nowhere. <laughs> I don't care if he's got a stiff jack and a cracker. He's going. <laughs> it's time now for this week's high pressure. Got to Barry Greenstein tonight. He put all his money in with the worst hand, but he came out smelling like a rose with a new catchphrase. That math is in the alley. At spadeclub.com, there are big cash prizes and no buy-in. See site for details. Welcome back to the Golden Nugget Resort, home of high-stakes poker. I wouldn't have called all in from David. <laughs> I'll tell you that, but I might have called her. Doyle confirming also that he would have called if Tom Juan would have made a big bet on the river there. And Elliot's going to raise to 3500 with his A7 offsuit. And this will be the last hand of the evening. So Hamiaz is in. Negron is in. God, I win that on so many river plays. If you don't call. Barry's just going to call with his nines. Well, not once you call. Before then. And Dwan's going to play his ace 10. Five guys going to the flop here. And Daniel flops three queens. And both Tom Juan and Ellie have made aces up. Juan's got the better kicker. Ellie bets 10,500. And Daniel's going to casually call. Oh, what happened to that chip? Let me throw it in there, too. Barry calls it a night. Tom calls. There's a flush draw out there. He's hoping someone has a flush draw and someone has a weaker ace. Four on the turn. Daniel bets 30,000. No checking for Mr. Negranu. Now, Daniel's been playing pretty close to the vest on this show. He lost a lot of money in our last session. 
and Tom Juan's calculating the whole thing. Would it make sense for Daniel to bet 30000 with a flush draw? Answer he comes up with is no. Ellie's thinking about the same scenario. Will he come up with the same answer? He comes up with a different answer. He said, maybe Daniel does have a flush draw. Ellie checks. He hopes Daniel checks behind him. But Daniel is not checking. Daniel, 75,000. Didn't take Ellie too long to release there. Little get back for Daniel here. Hopefully this will put Daniel in better spirits going into our next session. I'm going to try and get one of those drinks that Doyle had. <laughs> get that little pleasurable experience myself. Yeah, that was a good one. Next time on High Stakes Poker, Tom Dwan continues to apply pressure to the table, and no one can find the courage to fight back. Did you say that I have two things? Oh. That's about the only hand I couldn't have. Daniel Negrano's troubles only get worse. Oh, I'm just destined. And Barry Greenstein tries to pick on an old friend. I keep thinking they're 20, I don't know why. I keep on a little bit. The second time I put in 100. Or I didn't need to. Yeah, right. Next time on High Stakes Poker.